Hello, and welcome to Look Smarter Than You Are with Oracle Business Analytics, creating custom region maps. Using maps helps convey a message of relationship of data, especially in the area of geography. A good source for map data, or maps, is the United States Census. The Tiger Line shapefiles provide county and state boundary maps, which are congruent and easy to integrate within the OBIE. But what happens when you need to make a custom region? Well, in creating aggregate data in table on a database, we use the sum functions, or mins and max, or count. In OBI spatial data, we're able to do quite the same, but using some of the spatial definition functions. So to create a custom region, we can use the SDO aggregate union function to merge the geometry from one table and put it into a different table. Or if it's just for display purposes, we can do the same. In this example, we're taking the counties from the state of Tennessee to create a boundary of the state of Tennessee. To do this, it's really five quick and easy steps. First, we create a new table, our target table, with a geometry column and at least one key column that we will be using to link to our OBIE data. We'll register that data or that table using the update Oracle Spatial Metadata. Next, we'll load data from a source table into our new table using the aggregate function. We'll apply a spatial index and then finally we'll be ready to view it. So follow me into our computer and our database to see how this is done. So we're now in SQL Developer. We've taken the census shapefile for the United States and uploaded it into our Oracle database using Map Builder. I've taken some time to clean up the columns, remove some extraneous ones, and then add better names for us to understand our data. The most important column of the data is going to be our column 9, the geometry. Well, let's look at the data. We can see the regions, the divisions, the state FIPS, state name, the abbreviation, a display name, the longitude and latitude of the center point of the state, and then finally the geometry. And this is nothing more than a big array of points to draw a line around the state. But to make our custom region, we need to know a little bit more about the regions that we have available. So let's look at a SQL statement that's going to tell us that information. We're going to do a select region and division and then a count of rows for each of those. So if we look, look at our data, we can see that there are four unique regions, nine divisions split among those four regions, and then our states and the District of Columbia split amongst those regions. So let's look at it a little bit more and see which states make up the regions so that when we build our table and populate that, we can classify the regions. So here is a select of regions and state abbreviations from our state table. And as you can see, region one looks to be that of the east. Region two looks to be states in the central or Midwest. Region three looks to be made up of states in the south. And then finally, region four looks to be those states in the west. And again, 51 states because we have the District of Columbia in our data. So let's create a new custom region table. We're going to create a table, call it US Regions. 
we will give it a name and an ID. These are for linking into analytic data later. And then finally, our geometry column. And we now have our new table created and committed to the database. So let's refresh our database tables. And there is our regions. So next, we need to update the spatial metadata. We need to register this table into the database. To do that, let's first look at the metadata for the states table so that our regions use the same information. So if we go to a right click on our states and go to spatial and update spatial metadata, we can see the spatial metadata for the US states table. We have an index, we have a geometry column, we have the spatial reference indicator, and then we have the dimensions of our map. Then these are the furthest extremes from center. In the in the sake of the United or the world, we have a longitude and a latitude that span from a minus 180 to a positive 180 on the longitude, and a minus 90 to a positive 90 on the latitude and then the tolerances for mapping and how precise the lines are to those exact points, uh, longitude and latitude along the map edges. To update the spatial metadata, we're going to right click on our regions, go to spatial, update spatial metadata. Now to set this information about our map, we need to look at what those portions are. So the coordinate system identifier basically is telling us what type of map we're going to use. Will it have a rounded, more curved northern border, border or the flat northern border? Since the U.S. states that we built the map off of has a flat northern border, that will be our projection. The spatial dimensions that is telling us how big our map is. What is the furthest left and our furthest right, or our max y and, and min y, and our max x and our min x. So when we start to build out our spatial metadata, we have that information. So we'll put in our spatial reference, 8307. We'll add our dimensions for longitude. The lower boundary. Our upper boundary. Our tolerance and then our latitude and our tolerance and we apply. So now we need to load the data into our table from our US states into the regions. So we have four inserts, one for each region. We give it the region ID, the region name, and then aggregate the geometry from the US states table where the region is equal to the region we're loading. So let's run the scripts. This will take a little bit of time while the database is aggregating the geometry. And as you can see, as it's going from line to line to line, we will start to see the number of rows inserted into our table. And there we have it, four rows inserted into our new table. 
So let's go back to our data now within the US regions. Refresh. And now we should see our four rows, region name, ID, and geometry. Well, let's update the spatial index. Create a name. Hit apply. And now we have a spatial index. Now the last step is to view our map. Now we don't necessarily need to load it to OBI to view that. SQL Developer has a view map option or a map view option. So let's bring up the map view option. We're connected to our database. We'll create a SQL statement for regions. Select star from US region. Our lines are going to be the, the light brown and our fill will be the yellow. We don't need to worry about the annotation at this point. We'll hit OK and we will execute the query to refresh the map. And there we have it. We have our four US regions to be able to report against. Now all we need to do is to take this geometry file, create a map theme, and link it into OBIE. So as we saw in the SQL Developer, it really was only five simple steps. And as a quick review, we create the new table, making sure that we have a key column or two in which we can link to OBIE and then the geometry column. We update our spatial metadata, giving it the upper and low boundaries. We load the data from a source table into our target table. We create our spatial index. And finally, we view our new region.